This video is about getting help. This might be the most important video that you watch during the class. Data analysis is often about trying to discover what the right method to use on the right particular data type is, and sometimes those questions have never been asked before or only asked for it by a few people. So knowing how to phrase your question in just the right way can help you get the answer much more quickly and move on with your data analysis. So first a little bit about the difference between asking questions in a standard class and in a massive online open class like this one. In a standard class, there are about 30 or 100 people. You can raise your hand and ask a question, and the instructor will respond directly to you. In this class, there are almost 100,000 people enrolled, and you're going to be posting your questions to the message board. Then other people will vote on whether your question should be answered or not. Your instructor will respond as often as possible to as many of the questions as he can, but I might not be able to get to all of them. So your peers will also be responsible for responding to some of your questions. Knowing how to ask questions in the right way will save both you and the other people in the class a lot of time and help you get your data analysis done more quickly than you would if you start off asking questions in a way that makes it difficult to get answers. So the first thing to keep in mind is the, the fastest answer is often the one you find yourself. It's important to try to answer your own questions because often the first hit on Google or something in the help file or something on the forums will already answer your question. Rather than spending the time trying to phrase your question just right, you might be able to find the information very quickly. But something to keep in mind is that if you figure out the answer to a question that you've been having and you see it on the, that same question on the message board posted by one of your fellow students, it would really help out if you post the solution that you found. It will help both the instructor but also the other people in the class and hopefully we'll all become better data analysts. So here are some resources on where you can look for different types of questions that you might have. This is if you're trying to answer your questions either on your own or through the class. So for our programming, I've linked here to the lectures from Roger's uh, Computing for Data Analysis class that cover a lot of the background material you might be interested in. You can also search the archive of the class forums since the questions will likely be targeted to the types of the data that you'll be seeing in class. You can read the manual or help files for the particular packages, and we'll talk about that in a second. Or you can search on the web, or ask a skilled friend that's close to you, or you can post a question to the class forums. Finally, if the, these methods fail, you can also post a question to the R mailing list or Stack Overflow. Remember to mind etiquette for those particular mailing lists when posting questions outside of the class forums. For data analysis and statistics, it's slightly different, although the theme is sort of the same. You can search the archive of the class forums, you can search on the web, or you can ask a skilled friend, or you can post to the class forums. Outside of the class forums, cross-validated is a, a forum for asking general statistics-related questions. In general, if you take a little bit more time to ask your question in the right way, then you'll be much more likely to get responses on any of the forums you might post to. So first we're going to talk a little bit about how to find uh, help on R functions directly from R itself. So you can access a help file for a function by typing question mark and then the name of that function. So in this case, question mark R norm. You can also search through the help files for a particular phrase by typing help.search, open parentheses, in quotes, the, f the phrase that you're looking for, close parentheses. You can get the arguments of a function by using the function args, like so. This will tell you that it's a function and list out what the arguments are that that function takes in R. You can also see the, the actual code for that function by simply typing the function name with no parentheses and no arguments and hitting return. Then you'll see something like this, which shows you the, the actual code that corresponds to that R function. Another place that you can look is the R reference card, which I've linked to here. The R reference card has a list of functions that are most commonly used for a lot of different applications. You can use that as an additional resource along with the YouTube videos for Rogers Computing for Data Analysis class. So now I'm going to very quickly go over how to ask an R question. Roger covered this in his course, but I just want to make sure for the people that haven't taken that course, how to ask questions. So first, you need to list what are the steps that will reproduce the problem. Specifically, you should include all of the code you used to try to answer the question that you were trying to answer. You should tell people what you expected to see as an output, 
and what you saw instead, so that they can take you from what you saw to the expected answer that you'd like by changing and editing the code that you produced. You should also report the version of the product that you're using, the R packages, and so forth. You should also report what operating system you're on, whether it's a Mac or a Windows machine, because sometimes the error messages and the particular nuances of R are specific to operating systems or to specific versions of packages. When you're asking a data analysis question, there's a similar set of things that you should think about. So first of all, you should state what the question you are trying to answer is, and the more explicit about that question you can be, the better you can be. Then you should report what steps or tools you use to answer it. This might either be the step-by-step -step explanation of what you tried to do, or maybe even better, what R code you tried to use to answer the question. Again, report what you expected to see and what you saw instead, so that people can take you from what you, ex what you saw to what you expect to see. Another important component of asking questions about data analysis, and this probably applies to R as well, is that you should report what other solutions you have thought about. Since people will be going through the message boards and trying to answer questions for each other, potentially quickly because they're busy, they might try to throw off an answer that comes very quickly off the top of their head. If you've already tried a few of these off the top of the head answers, it might be useful to just list that you've tried them so that other people won't immediately suggest that and you don't waste a message back and forth on the message boards. So here's a little bit of uh, specifics about how to be specific in the title of your questions. So here's an example for each of an R question and a data analysis question of bad, better, and even better titles for the forum posts. So a bad example is, help, can't fit a linear model, or help, don't understand PCA. In both cases, you've given very little information to the people that might be help it, trying to help answer your question, and they're probably going to write you back to ask for more of that information. So better statements might be saying that R, in R2.15.0, the LM function produces a seg fault with large data frames, Mac OS 10.6.3. So this gives information about the version and the operating system. It also gives information about which function you're using and specifically where that function breaks down. Similarly, for data analysis, you could say applied principal component analysis to a matrix. What are U, D, and V transpose? Here again, instead of using an abbreviation, PCA, you've explicitly spelled out the method that you're using. You've also explicitly spelled out you've applied it to a matrix and have given some concrete details about what you'd like interpreted. Even better uh, posts for the mailing lists start off with all the relevant information for R, such as the version number and the operating system, and then very briefly summarize exactly what the problem is. It's a seg fault on a large data frame. This is a little bit better because it's a little bit more concise, and it gives people at a glance a little bit easier, uh, an easier way to understand the information that you're asking about. Similarly, you can ask using principal components to discover common variation in a rows of a matrix. Should I use U, D, or V transpose? This question is much more specific than the previous question, and so people won't have to ask you why you're trying to interpret a particular variable. So, on top of being specific, here's some other uh, etiquette. Here's some other etiquette for forums or help sites. This applies both to our in-class forums and to forums you might post to elsewhere. Remember to describe the goal of what you're trying to do. Be very explicit so that people don't have to ask you for more information, but try not to be too verbose. The goal is to provide all the necessary information, but no more. It never hurts to be polite and follow up your posts with solutions that you find. If somebody responds to you by email or in a way that doesn't appear on the forums, if you post the response on the forums and the answer or the solution to your question, it'll help everybody out. Remember to use the forums rather than emailing people directly. Some examples of don'ts. So one thing that will cause you, some things that will slow down the response to your answer. First of all, if you immediately assume you found a bug in somebody else's software or grovel as a substitute for doing your own work, that will make people less inclined to respond. If you post homeworks to mailing, on mailing lists, people probably won't respond. People can usually tell when you're posting a question, particularly on the in-class forums where you all have the same assignments. If you email multiple mailing lists at once or the wrong mailing list, your questions may get lost or people might not respond as quickly as you'd like. 
Another thing to do is to ask not to do is to ask people to fix your code without explaining the problem. Just putting the code up and saying this does this code doesn't work doesn't won't lead to quick answers. Also, try not to ask your general data analysis questions on the R forums. Ask them in R forums or on Stack or on Cross Validated. Sorry. A note on Googling data analysis questions. The best place to start for general questions is on R forum. Stack Overflow and the R mailing list can be used for software questions, but you should stick to cross validated for more general questions. Otherwise, you can Google data type, data analysis, or data type R package, where you replace data type with the data that you're interested in. For example, gene expression, data analysis, or gene expression, R package. Another important thing to keep in mind is that you have to try to identify what data analysis is called for your data type. Data analysis isn't always called the same thing in all fields. In, bio, in medical data, bio, the data analysis is called biostatistics. Data for web analytics, data analysis for web analytics is called data science. Data analysis for computer vision is called machine learning. Data analysis for learning about the structure of text is called natural language processing and so on and so forth. So knowing what to call data analysis can often be half the hurdle. Here are some further resources that you might find useful when you're looking for help. First of all, again, the links to Roger's Computing for Data Analysis videos on YouTube. And then here's a set of very short, two minute long tutorials in R that can be useful if you have very specific things you're trying to figure out how to do with R. You might also find these data analysis resources useful. These are two uh, statistical data analysis textbooks that are at a relatively moderate level that are available online. The Elements of Statistical Learning and advanced data analysis from an elementary point of view. I'll also point out further resources when I talk about any specific method throughout the course of this, of this course. The credits for these lectures go to Roger's Getting Help video for his Computing for Data Analysis class, and they're inspired by Eric Raymond's How to Ask Questions the Smart Way. Good luck, and I hope you get all of your questions answered.